I'll just meet you up the top. So, the CB radio is one of those things, the, the UHF CB radio in Australia, 477, 476, 477 meg, is a ubiquitous in touring, 4x4ing and adventuring in Australia, and I'm pretty sure that each country has its citizens band. Um, that you can uh, have an inbuilt uh, system in your car like this one, or you can go for a uh, handheld like this one. This is a GME. This is a very good little radio. Um, this one's only two watts. But some of these radios, especially the five watt ones, can be uh, quite pricey. Um, um, you know, up four hundred plus dollars in some cases. But there is a another option. So. Um, we're going to head back to the lab, um, back in my office, and we're going to take a look at this other option and um, show you what it's all about. So let's uh, get back to the lab. So welcome to the lab. This is where it all happens. Um, so we're going to uh, have a look at this radio in question. Um, we'll test it. We'll test the power output. We'll test the antenna. Uh, we'll test some other antennas. Just. Um, one other thing before we start is this is a fully programmable radio so you can program it in the two meter band which is like the 120 130 megahertz range and you can program it in the um, 400 to 500 megahertz band just be aware that you cannot transmit on anything that you don't have a license for so unless you're a ham radio operator with a license you can't transmit on those frequencies you can only transmit in the uh, citizens band which is the normal Australian UHF 476 477 there's 80 channels there you can only transmit within spec so don't transmit at a higher power don't transmit outside of the bandwidth um, per channel um, there are some fairly serious um, ramifications if you get caught uh, transmitting on frequencies you shouldn't or out of spec so just be aware of that you can program this radio, you can lock it down um, so you can't get yourself in trouble and I would definitely recommend either doing that or getting someone who uh, knows how to do that. So this uh, video isn't about um, doing anything that is outside of the normal transmitting um, specifications of any license, frequency, band, etc. So with that said, let's uh, get on with it and uh, show you how to set it up as a UHF um, citizens band radio and do these few tests. So the CB radio in question is called the Baofeng, Baofeng, I think that's how it's pronounced. It's a Chinese radio and um, I've got the specs here. It's um, a fully programmable radio. Um, this particular one is programmable to up to five watts um, and uh, I think that's one and five is low and high power. You can program um, like the two meter band, so the 120, 150 area, and then the 400 to 500 band. And uh, you can program it to do anything. It's got some pretty cool features, um, <clears throat> as well as it's been a pretty solid radio. It has two LCD lines on it, and you can run two channels at once. And it's got a split power to talk, uh, push to talk button, so if you press on the bottom one, it transmits on the bottom channel and if you transmit on the top one it transmits on the top but you can listen to two independently. Um, pretty cool idea. Um, you can scan either or. You can set this thing, it's like a blank sheet of, sheet of paper. You can set this thing up and it will it will uh, just about do anything and we'll go through the setup um, with the computer and the programming cable. It comes with um, the, this is like an earpiece and microphone and I bought the programming cable which is um, a separate item for a couple of dollars. So we will um, <coughs> uh, test out this, uh, the power output. We'll test uh, some antennas. I've uh, got some test gear there. But look, the, the build quality is, is damn good. Um, when you compare it to the Electrophone, this little Electrophone is a, is a great little radio. Um, the plastics is very close. Um, it, it's pretty damn good. Um, these little battery buttons that hold the battery on are a little bit rattly if you can hear that. But that's about the only thing you could say. Everything else, it's pretty rock solid. A um, couple of funny things, they put a torch in the end here and uh, that, oh, I don't know, seems a bit pointless. They could have put another button there to help with the use of it, like changing the channel. 
Um, comes with a desktop charger. Uh, that's this uh, here, and it just uh, slots in, and uh, that's how you charge it. Um, only don't, thing I don't like about the charging is there is no direct way to plug this in, no USB port, no separate port. So you, you've got to get a 12 volt charger for this cradle and take the cradle with you. That's the only downside that I can uh, come, come up with really on the charging. Other than that, it performs quite well. This antenna is actually tuned to 430, must be the frequency they use somewhere else, maybe in the States. Um, but it does perform quite well on 470, but the SWR is quite high and we will show that. Uh, soon so let's um yeah let's uh take a look and maybe uh get into the programming of this radio this is a uh, demonstration of how to program the radio so what we need first is a laptop um, i've found that the windows version works better uh, and this is a, a program called chirp um, if you search on the internet you'll see lots of uh lots of information about that so we start up chirp we need the programming cable which is this one and uh, has this like it looks like an airplane but it's actually a 2.5 and a 3.5 and we just plug this into a usb port this is actually just a usb to serial converter plug that into a usb port and that should pick up the um, a usb and the serial converter and set up the um, port serial port so then we just take off this little flap of rubber here and we plug this in and you've got to make sure that's all the way home um, because that can quite easily uh, not quite seat and cause you trouble so then you turn on the radio and just put it aside and you should be able to go into radio download from radio you actually need to do this first um, before you do anything to set up a file um, that is compatible and then you can edit it um, Comes up with a little dialog box what com port what radio and what model you just go okay And it says cloning which just means it's uh, grabbing that information <clears throat> so that takes a uh, probably 20 seconds if that and then after that you'll see um, a list of all the channels of what's in the radio so there's your list of channels um, I've got the uh, AD UHFs and the repeaters programmed in and then on the left over here there's also some global settings so in here is where you can turn off transmit and change uh, global settings for the radio and I won't go into that because uh, if you get a copy of the software you'll be able to have a look yourself but normally if you get a file from somebody else you can just uh, go file um, open you can then um, just choose, uh, trying to think where I stuck one, oops, um, you can then choose, here's one, like one of these image files and it will open up a new tab and it shows you what's an image file. So once you've got your uh, image file you can then just go radio, upload to radio and it's sort of the similar uh, process as downloading, it just uh, opens up the dialog and then just uploads to the radio all of those settings and that's pretty well simple as as it gets There's a lot of detail behind the settings and uh, what channels have what bandwidths and all that I'm not going to go into that here uh, there's plenty of information about that on the online so once that's done you can just pull the cord out of the radio and away you go So there you go, so once that's done, you just pull the cord out, your radio restarts, and you're programmed. And that's as simple as that. So we're gonna test the radio now. So to do that, I've got a dummy load. That's a small dummy load. This is a large dummy load for high power. I've got a small dummy load. This means we don't have to use an antenna. I have a power SWR meter, and I have the radio. So all we need to do is take the antenna off the radio. That's the connector style. We screw in the this end. It says antenna on this end. So we screw in this end, the meter. And you can use an antenna for this, but a uh, dummy load means you won't be interfering with anybody. Screw on the dummy load. Turn on the meter. 
that little dot there says it's in SWR, we just change it to power. We then turn on the radio and we can hit transmit and we're getting 4.4 watts, 4.3 watts. So that's about what I'd expect out of a, um, a 5 watt. Uh, it's about the same as what the uh, in-dash system in my car, it's about the same as what I've seen everywhere else. 4.4, 4.3. If we flick that to SWR, we should get around exactly one because it's a dummy load. So that's a perfect SWR as we would expect. So that just shows that even though it's a, um, you know, a Chinese radio from the cheaper end, it's definitely outputting its uh, full amount of watts. Okay, so let's uh, move on to some other tests. So what we're going to do here is test the SWR of this antenna. This is tuned to 130 megahertz. It's actually a dual band antenna, a um, 70, uh, sorry, a uh, two meter or 120 meg, 150 meg, and a 477 meg. And I'll actually show that on a meter later, but we're going to test the SWR of this antenna. So for that, we just have to put the meter on the radio as before. We need an adapter, so we need to put an adapter on the antenna to get the right gender. And then we screw the antenna on the top. So it's the radio with the standard antenna and the SWR meter. We turn on the meter and it's set into SWR. We turn on and we can uh, hit the button and we've got an SWR of 1.7 which isn't too bad, but it's it's definitely not as good as some antennas that I've seen. If we flick at the power mode, what power, because the SWR can also affect power output. So we had 4 point, uh, was it 4.3 to 4.4 before? So now we've got a power of 4.2, 4.1. So we've lost a little bit of power because that SWR is out, but not a lot. It actually performs pretty well. So we can actually test some other antennas. So uh, maybe I'll stick a, a proper dipole 477 antenna on and see what the SWR is on that. So we have this uh, dipole uh, proper UHF for Australia 476, 477. And we have some adapters to get it onto the meter. So we will uh, reset the meter. Put this on. Let's see what the SWR is on this. So it is on SWR mode. So let's now push the button. There you're getting a 1.02. So that tells you that this antenna is far better tuned than the uh, one that it comes with. And I know that because this is a 430 and there's another test that I'll show that will show the difference. So let's move on to uh, the other tests where we will um, uh, show the SWR um, on a graph on uh, this machine here, show you the different SWR characteristics of each antenna. So let's get that set up. So for this test, we need the, uh, to start with, we need the antenna that come on the radio, an adapter, and this um, RF impedance analyzer. So we just need to Put uh, that onto there, screw the antenna on, and then we start this thing up. And this thing is a really nifty little gadget, so that's one of the menus, but uh, let's flick to this menu. And what this is showing you is, this is the SWR. So as you can see, at this is a dual 120 four, uh, 430 band antenna. So it's actually showing you um, there is the SWR should go down as, as one is the best. So it goes down close to one in the 120 meg band. Then it is uh, pretty rubbish right until it gets to that 430 meg band. And I've actually, this pointer here is uh, 476, which is where the Australian uh, UHF sits. And as you can see, um, this is a 130. So we really would want that triangle to be at the bottom of here to have the best SWR, but it doesn't. And that's why it won't perform quite as well 
as a properly tuned one. And I'll show you, I'll hook up the dipole again and show you the SWR on that. So this is the um, proper UHF Australia antenna. And as you can see, the little marker, whoop, bit of interference, little marker is the best SWR is in these uh, low areas. So it's actually better tuned. So it's not far below, bit of interference there, but it's not far below one. Um, so that's uh, a lot better tuned antenna for this radio. And I have proven that with um, uh, just infield testing that this uh, antenna I've got hooked up to this meter will perform a lot better than, than this uh, factory one. So what would you expect to pay? So. I bought mine off eBay from an Australian uh, seller, so I would get it quickly and it wouldn't take forever. And it cost me, with free shipping, $38.99. Unbelievable when you think about it. Um, $38.99 and you, I had to buy the programming cable, which I think was another $5 or something like that, um, to, and a little bit of know-how to, to get it to work uh, and get it set up. And you can buy these things in 10 packs and 50 packs and all sorts of things. But yeah, even for $30, even if it lasts, you know, it looks like it's good quality, but even if it lasts 12 months, you know, worth every cent. So there you go. If you want to have a bit of a play around or, or uh, you want a, a cost-effective radio, then definitely the Baofeng v, uh, UV82 is the model, I believe. Um, yeah, UV82. Uh, VHF UHF is definitely worth uh, looking into but as I said earlier just make sure that you do everything within the law and don't go broadcasting on frequencies that you shouldn't. I hope that uh, yeah was just of interest at least or help somebody out um, but um, yeah just a uh, little bit of info for uh, those who are in the in the market for uh, radio for whatever reason. Well I'll see you on the next one.